Hey, how you all going? It's Jai, that Aussie metal guy here with crank.com and with that metalstation.com. And today I'm getting to have a chat with one half of Turkey Vulture, Jesse May, um, whose latest EP, Twist the Knife, comes out January 14th. Um, they're out of Connecticut and it is the third EP, I believe, with them all. Thank you very much mm -hmm. for joining me. Thanks for having me. Um, you guys have got a, a cool sound. I, I don't kind of want to describe your sound, but if you had to describe your sound to someone who hadn't heard your music before and you're like, here, yeah, have a listen to Turkey Vulture, how would you describe your sound? Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to steal something from um, something a listener said. He said a little bit, a little bit punk, a little bit metal, 100% uh, kick ass. Yes. And I, I like that description. I don't know if I'd actually say that to someone in real life, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you would too. I think that's a perfect description for it as well. It is um, has that punk attitude and that punk sound, but also, as you mentioned, those elements of metal, not only doom, but I'm also picking up like a little bit of the black there and stuff, things like that, all sorts of different elements of it as well. <laughs> How did this originally begin this project with you and um, Jim? Well, Jim and I have known each other for... A long, long time since 2008. Um, we were friends and bandmates for many years, and then we actually started dating and got married in 2019. Um, and at some point, you know, we, we were in a couple of different bands together, and you know, as the years go by, bands evolve and devolve and that kind of thing. And eventually, we we're like, you know, it's easier to just do something with the two of us. Um, so we don't have to worry about other people's schedules and, you know, who's doing what. Um, so we just started jamming t just the two of us in the basement and, um, and that was Turkey Vulture. And I think we started probably in December, 2019. Oh, um, wow. So, yeah, um, just, you know, was that a rock band you guys were in before or to, what was the project yeah, you were in before? In, um, we were in a rock band for a while called Pink Missile. Um, I played bass in that band and he plays drums. Um, so we were in that for a few years. That's how we met each other, actually. <laughs> I, I joined this band. Um, and then that band kind of evolved into another project called Jimmy Junkbird and the Stiffs. <laughs> and that was, that was more of a, a genre blend kind of band, like um, metal and punk and prog uh, with a very wacky, cool singer. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. We did that for a couple of years. Uh, but then the singer wanted to focus more um, on writing. He's also a writer. Um, yep. Writes like sci-fi, crazy books like this thick. Oh, no. So we're like, okay, you know, have fun. And, and then it was us. So. So, so at the beginning, what was it, what kind of like inspired you guys? You're like, what was it like just the need to create and kind of. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, it's something that we both, enjoy you know music is a big part of our lives and not something that we wanted to give up um so we just had to find a, a way to do it with just us and you know and initially was this something that you and jim were doing at home and then you're like wait a minute we got something here maybe we should kind of release some of this and kind of see where it goes yeah yeah pretty much pretty much we um we did our first ep boxer um we recorded that with a friend put that out and you know and we got some pretty good responses like people were people were getting into it and then um our second ep time to pay that one picked up some more steam i think um and that's the one with like the skull, skull thing on the, cover, and the coffin and, and the, the guitar and the eye yeah i'm looking yeah. at it right now oh and, nice <laughs> and, and jim does all the artwork for that as well yeah. doesn't he yeah yeah he's a great artist and his i have to say the twist the nice the knife cover with with him beheaded and yeah. me holding his head, that was 110% his idea. <laughs> I, 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 not like, what did he head you, honey? You know? <laughs> That's pretty funny, though. What did you think when you first seen that cover? And he's like, have a, have a sus of this one, babe. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, he had some other ideas previously that I don't even remember what they were, but he's like, well, you didn't like the other ideas. <laughs> I was like, oh, 
okay. It's, you know, it's your head. Yeah, it, it came out well though, and it kind of has that. You know, you got the horns, and you've had, you do have that kind of that corpse paint on your face yep. as well. So, kind of as I was listening to it, I kind of listened to it first before I actually went and had a look at the cover because I didn't want it to uh-huh. kind of influence me. And I was picking up these little bit of black metal influences in there. Is that the case? Is this something you were kind of, or just something that kind of randomly come across, or? Well, I'd say out of our influences, black metal is probably a smaller one, yeah. but I like, I think we both like some of it, yep. but we don't know a ton. Like right right now, I actually have a Panopticon back patch on my, my shirt. <laughs> so, you know, like here, here and there, like we pick up little bits of black metal along the way, but we're definitely not like. No. deep authorities on it or anything. no 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 because you get that punk influence as well that's that's what sits really heavy for me the, the, the punk side of it but also a little bit of the doom metal, metal elements seem to be on the heavier side with this band as well but you do mix in those other metal elements well, well we try we try <laughs> <laughs> so so with the, the, the band like you're saying you started kind of doing music around 2019 what's it been like because it has been a a busy couple of years has it been something that's kind of been good for you both to creatively be able to make music at home together to kind of get you through the last couple of years with the various lockdowns all over the world it have been a strange weird fucking time at the moment yeah for sure um i mean we started locally i think getting the ball rolling right around when the pandemic started like we we're, we're just yeah. starting to like you know sound passable on stage and people were like oh okay like this is cool and then no more shows so we're like okay but then you know everybody's home so we just we worked on our music um we did like some live stream shows from our basement and i think that just helped us kind of hone our set yep. uh, you know like you're, you're kind of like pra- you're practicing but there's kind of people watching maybe yeah. But you're just practicing like into the iPad, which is a little weird. weird. <laughs> you know, so we did a lot of that. You know, we wrote more songs. And um, then in like, I don't know, maybe like fall 2020, shows started to come back in our area. And, you know, places started to be able to open up. Um, so, we, you know, we just got back at it. did some outdoor shows while the weather was warm enough. And then, yep. then it was winter. There were no more outdoor shows. Yeah. <laughs> And that, then we had a baby. We had ah. a baby boy in January. Yeah. Congratulations to you both. Thank you. Thank a, you. A busy time as well, like yeah. making music and then with a, a, a baby as well. That yeah. would have made things interesting. How, how, when it comes to the creativity process, how do you guys make music? How, how does this work? Tell us a little bit about that side of things. Well, usually one of us will write like the, the main part of a song, like the yep. music for it. Um, and then we collaborate on the lyrics. We one of us will write like a, a draft of it, and then we'll we'll go back and forth and edit and play play past the napkin, as they say. Yep. Um, so yeah, you, usually one or the other of us writes the main part of something, and then the other one puts their touches on it. So I, I twist the knife. Jim wrote uh, Fiji and Where the Truth Dwells, and we both wrote the lyrics for Livestock, and I wrote the music. And then I wrote, uh, she's married, but not to me. So th- this one has, has enough, a lot of both of us on it. So. Yeah, and that one, that last one uh, definitely has that punky attitude as well. I'll just, yeah. the very <laughs> last track I listened to just before I jumped into this interview and I had a little bit of a laugh about that one. Oh, cool. <laughs> awesome. And the, well, and we the have first, a video coming out for that one. That one? Awesome. When's yeah. that one going to be dropping, can you say? Uh, early January, before uh, the release. Yeah. So. No, it's been good to see bands like yourself. I know it has been a weird time starting and as a band starting in this time and going forward, but it's kind of good to see bands like yourself that have used this time constructively to lay down some work and just get used to to playing together as well and getting ready for when these lockdowns do and when we're all able to play live and the scene is going forward as well. And it would have been one of those things that you and, Jim would have been kind of really heavily leaning into as well and laying down that work and getting ready for when things do open up. Cause it does kind of, I suppose it would be really disheartening as I was saying, starting during the, all of this as well. Yeah. And then yeah. as you said, just starting to play live, then everyone's like, 
no. And then you get no government support as well. It's not like people are like, you know, oh, well, you're in a band. Here's some help in the art sector. It's not like any many of the arts industries got looked after during the last couple of years as well. Yeah, a lot, a lot of venues in our area have closed, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just the same here in Australia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the pandemic pr- pretty much put the nail in the coffin for, for a few of them. So. Yeah, and b- bands like yourself, we all do this for the love of the music industry. I know I do this, the amount of hours I put in this. I do this because I love the bloody scene. I don't expect anything out of it. I know a lot of the bands in the underground scene, they're doing the same thing. They're working countless yeah, yeah, hours. I mean, we're, we're doing it for fun. We you know, it. We're just happy to have a place that will let us in. And, <laughs> <you know. laughs> and and have some people that let, them, let us yell at them and play some yeah. music really loud. And um, Tell us exactly. about that first single, Fiji. Oh, man. So that one is about, I don't know if you, you're familiar with the Jim Carrey movie, The Truman Show. Um, and if, if anybody who's listening is not familiar with it, basically, Jim Carrey's Truman, and he is he is in a reality show about his own life, and he has no idea. And the show just follows him from when he's born, and now he's like an adult. And he's starting to suspect that like something is not not the way it should be. And the title comes from he, he decides, like, he wants to go to Fiji. Oh, there goes dad and the baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, this is, this is one that Jim wrote. Um, and, you know, he, Truman wants to go to Fiji, and the producers of the show are all trying to prevent him from getting to Fiji because there is no Fiji because he's in this big Except. escape thing. Like, <laughs> So it's, it's a cool movie if you haven't seen it. And I think, I think Jim made, like, a very kind of unexpected interpretation of it so it's a fun song to play definitely that it came out came out really well um the ep does drop january 14th tell me a little bit about the next track livestock on our way to slaughter i'm interested ah that, that's another movie one i yeah. guess we went for kind of a misfit thing with all these these movie songs uh, that one that one's inspired by the movie they live it's like an 80s movie with john carpenter and um the wrestler Rowdy Rowdy Piper is the main character. Is that the one with the glasses? Yes, yes. Right, you put <laughs> oh, the remember. glasses, and then yeah. you can see, see the scary people. So, so that's that one. I mean, both of the songs, like they are about movies, but they're also about like how we're all being watched. You know, we're all and we're 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 like getting ourselves to be watched. We're all over social media. Like everything's out there. Everywhere you go, there's a, a video camera of it. Everything you do, like every place you go, your cell phone is tracking you. You know, it's telling you, oh, 15 minutes to get home. It's like, how did you know where I was? Oh, wait, I carry you around. You know, so both of those songs have that theme as well. Yeah, it's pretty funny that some of the things that people are going on about, like at the moment, oh, you know, I'm not getting political, but sometimes like, oh, I'm not getting the shot because they're tracking me, but everyone's got a fucking phone on them. Exactly. That tracks like every single track thing you. we're doing anyway. You're paying $100 a month to carry your tracker around. So. <laughs> I know. Um, who, yeah. done, who done the recording in that for this? Tell us a little bit about your recording process. How, how did you do that? Did you do this or tell us me a little bit up to that side of it all? Yeah, this um, this EP and the previous one were recorded by an engineer named Dave Kaminsky. Um, you know, he works in the Northeast and like East Coast area of the U.S. Um, and, and he's really great to work with. Um, and we, you know, we really liked how the recordings came out. Um, but this time we just went up, we went up to a place in the next state over from us for two days. We just stayed overnight. Um, my mom took the baby. Thank you, mom. <laughs> we're not, we're not have been possible without that. Um, and, you know, we just tracked the drums and tracked the guitars. And the next day we did the rest of the guitars and the bass and vocals. Uh, we don't, we don't play live with a backing track or anything. It's just the two of us, but I do bass on the recordings and, you know, the other guitar parts. Um, and we just banged it out in two days and that was that. Then we went and picked up the baby. Yeah, nice. That would have been a good experience though, to kind of get down there those couple of days and lay down that album. Kind of would have been the first one yeah. you've done since you had the bubs as well to kind of. Yeah, I mean that was pretty much our 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 little like summer getaway with each other. <laughs> Baby's first sleepover. So it, it was good. It, it was a cool place that we recorded in too. It was um like a historic colonial church yep. that had been renovated and it had apartments at the bottom. 
and one apartment somebody lived in, but the other apartment, uh, the studio would rent it out to people who were traveling to record there. So we yeah. got to stay right there. And then the studio part was on the second floor and the church like pipe organ was still there. Oh, and nice. Yeah, so you're like in this giant room, like next to a pipe organ. And <laughs> like, pretty cool. And yeah. then there's the churchyard, you know, the graveyard is right outside because it's one of those old churches. Yeah. So. Uh, a spooky place to lay music, but pretty cool as well. Yeah. So um, the, the, the live music scene, I'm interested in your area. You're down in Connecticut there, aren't you? And it's just gone winter, so I suppose that has affected things. But how has the, the, the live music scene and your local scene bounced back in, over the, since the last couple of years? Well, I think there's, you know, there's a dedicated group of people that, you know, enjoy it. Yep. And um, like a, there was a mask mandate in place, like in our area for a while. But at this point, it's not necessarily a mandate yep. uh, like government buildings it definitely is but local businesses can choose to have it or not have it at the moment okay. that i mean that could change you know it seems to change every couple of months yeah uh but with the vaccines and the boosters i think people are starting to get out more and you know feel like they feel safe to go out and enjoy music again and hang out with people so well you know we'll Again, see how that goes. See how it goes. But there's a mask mandate. So I know a lot of people get fucking up in arms. I actually work behind a bar. I'm in hospitality as well as a as another job. But like for me, if putting on a piece of fucking fabric over your face so we can keep our bars open and keep gigs going and clubs going yeah. and keeping this industry exactly. going, keeping the live music scene going, then 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 bugger it. It's like really not that much of an inconvenience compared to, you know, I, I agree. some of the problems. Yeah, I'm a teacher other by day. Yeah. And I wear, you know, I wear a mask all day. The five-year-olds wear a mask all day. Like you could wear a mask. Yeah, it's it's really it's not it's not that bad. As twenty twenty one comes to an end, it's like five days away till Christmas, and then what another five days till the end of the year. What has been some of the the, the like big highlights for you, being whether it musical or whatever for twenty twenty one? Well, I I'd say just getting back out and being able to play shows again. Yep. Uh, we had a couple really fun ones in our local area. And, you know, recording Twist the Knife was great. You know, it's kind of with, um, you know, with the baby and everything, it's like, can we pull this off? Like, is it going to sound decent? Is it going to sound like we put it off into all the different parts? And and we're really happy with how it came out. So, um, you know, we are releasing it a little into the new year, but we didn't want to release it at like Christmas. No. No, and it's yeah. a funny time of year. And as you said, it's kind of like winter over there. You kind of want to be able to play a couple of shows, I suppose, when you do release yeah. it too over in January. Look, Jesse, this has been an absolute pleasure. Everyone, go over to um, Bandcamp. You can grab all their EPs over there. you got the um, Tummy Time, also the Christmas Part track. You've got Time to Pay. you got the Quarantine Song, In the Pines, the Acoustic Demo, and, of course, the, the Debut EP Boxer. You can grab all them over at Bandcamp. Is there anywhere else that people should head over and support you guys as well? Oh, Spotify. Follow us on Spotify. Put us on your playlist. Actually, thanks to Andy Dowling from Lord. We have some Spotify listeners in Australia. Andy she Dowling from Lord. Like Hell yeah, so, Lord is so cool. That um Yeah, no, I, Andy, I, Andy's a cool guy. Yeah, I just and, um, interviewed uh, Ilium and it's got um, Lord Tim on vocals as well. That oh, guy wow. with Lord is just, man, that guy can sing. He's got the, the set yeah. of pipes. I come across Lord a number of years ago and just absolutely love those guys. So, you know, I think it was a prog power at one of the, the concerts there, one of the live videos. And mm. I was just, was a Black Roses Never Die or something like that. It was a killer track, killer band as well. Awesome. It's funny you mentioned Andy Dowling. Great, great, great band as well. I'm like kind of Lord so fanboy. Endorsed here. by Andy Dowling. <laughs> Andy <laughs> Dowling. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Hey, Jesse, this has been an absolute pleasure. Everybody head over to support Turkey Poultry. As you said, you can head over to Spotify, but also head over to Bandcamp and go buy all the bloody music as well. There's a cool merch over on there. Um, Twist the Knife, January 14th. Do you have any last words, shout outs, or thank yous you'd like to add in there, my friend? Well, I want to say thanks to you. Thank you for taking the time to interview us, especially so close to the holidays and, you know, with all that must be going on. So we appreciate it a lot. Thank you. No, absolute pleasure. I, as all the best to you, Jim, and your child as well through the, the Christmas and the holiday season. Thank you very much for joining us. Eh? Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Cheers, mate.